Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Sunday Night Live with Pasadena Church. And I know what you're saying already. This screen looks much better today, and I can't help but agree with you. And it's because today I've got my darling wife, Madeline, by my side, and, and we'll be sharing a message together in a little while. As our nation celebrates Valentine's Day, we'd like to take this opportunity to talk to you about love and communication. What's that? Love and communication. What'd you, what'd you say? I said love <laughs> and communication. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. But we, we'll get there. But first, we want to go into a time of worship and celebration. And after a prayer by our marriage pastors, Sylvester and Carolyn Williams, we want to share with you a time when our dear brother and friend, Stevie Wonder, came and gave a powerful testimony and song at Pasadena Church. Are you ready tonight? If not, come on, get ready because we're expecting a good time in the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Expecting a move of God today. Anybody need a miracle? Expecting a miracle in this place. Come on, let's claim it right here. Everybody do like this. In this place. Tell somebody close to you, get ready. Hallelujah. Ready for a good time. I'm getting ready for a good time. I'm getting ready for a good time in this place. Can I sing it again? Whoa, getting ready for a good time. In Africa, they say like this getting ready for a good time. I'm getting ready for a good time in this place. Come on and sing it with us, y'all. Say, I'm getting ready.
Come on. Releasing my faith in this place. Come on, get your faith up. Say, say I'm expecting a move of God. Anticipating. I know you're going to come, God. Releasing my faith in this place. One more time, everybody. Let me hear you, church. Say, I'm expecting a move. Anticipating. Releasing my faith in this place. One more time. You sound good, church. Say, I'm expecting a move. Anticipating. Releasing my faith in this place. In this place. One more time, everybody. Come on, everybody. Say, I'm expecting a move. I'm expecting a move.
some chains to be broken in my life. Hallelujah. I'm praying for lives to be healed. I'm praying for my eyes to be open so that Christ can be revealed and I can see as he sees. Hallelujah. Come on and break every chain, oh God. Chains be church family and friends we would like to wish you a happy Valentine's Day today and I can already hear some of you say Pastor Carolyn I don't celebrate Valentine's Day I don't have a husband or wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a significant other and while that may be true in your current circumstance it still doesn't mean that you can't celebrate Valentine's Day because of all people who have the right and the privilege to celebrate um, Valentine's Day, that's us as Christians. For God has called us and assigned us to live in the spirit of Valentine's Day every day of our lives. Yes. And according to the scripture, this is what God has to say actually about Valentine's Day. In 1 John 4, 7, 11, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And then in verse 11, it says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. So in as we encourage you today about um, Valentine's Day and how to enjoy it, it hinges on two things. One, that God so loved us, and two, that God has called us to love one another. Yes. So it really doesn't matter about your relationship status, right? And as of today, we'd like to think about, perhaps we want to think about showing love and caring for someone else. And I know all too often we start thinking that Valentine's Day is really about us. And I am guilty of charge because for 50 years I wait every year with bated breath to see how my husband is going to celebrate me and he does a nice job but I also have a niece Stacy who celebrates me every year and mm -hmm. Stacy sees that I get a beautiful bouquet of carnations because she knows that's one of my favorite flowers and I do expect those but um, we're asking you this year to think about how you can celebrate someone else for, for um, Valentine's Day.
perhaps you want to send someone a card or flowers or mm -hmm. candy or if you're living in the same household to give them a really really nice hug amen so <laughs> So in celebration of what I receive every year from Stacy, these beautiful carnations, I like to virtually give each and every one of you a carnation. For surely if I were present with you, I would be trying to give you a little something. So from Pastor Sylvester and myself, here are your virtual carnations, your yeah. flowers for Valentine's Day. And we wish you all a very happy day. Enjoy it. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for uh, being a giver, teaching us how to give, uh, teaching us love. And we, we love because you taught us how to love. You first loved us. Uh, you've said in your word that no greater gift than a man gives than to give his life for his friend. And you gave the life of your son, Jesus Christ, for us who came and sacrificed himself for us. Uh, even when we didn't love him and even when we were enemies of God, God loved us and showed us love and showed us mercy. So he's asking us also to show those who are not lovable love, to show them the gift of God, the love of God. And as we celebrate Valentine's Day, uh, at this season, let us show love, the love of God. We were taught love first, and that's why we show love. So, Father, we thank you and praise you for showing us love. Father, we ask that you bless Pastor Kerwin as he brings the message of love, the message of, of, of God to us as we receive it. Let us receive it with love and with joy. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So enjoy your day and every day live in the spirit of Valentine's Day, spreading love to everyone. Amen. Amen. Pastor Kerrigan, if you don't mind, I'd like to just speak for a moment on something. This morning I chose this song I'm going to do for a few reasons. Number one, because for me it's true. It's one of those songs that I wish that I had written. But more importantly than that, I'm glad that someone did write it. Because it's so true. And I feel that if more of us as men would not be afraid to say this very thing, the same kind of passion that we feel for the things that we like so much like our cars of which I have one but I'm not driving at this point but if we could just admit that we are every single day of our lives falling in love with God and the Son of God, Jesus Christ, how much more it would help us through our lives in different things that we're dealing with. And I say that specifically right now because for those of us who knew him personally and really admired how God used him to connect millions and millions of people in dance and song and their careers and so forth. I'm speaking of the late Don Cornelius. And um, It's a heartbreak to know that he ended his life the way that he did. I can't be judgmental to say why and all that. That's between God and him. 
What I can say is that we we need to, as a family, connect, connect more with our friends and loved ones and know what they're thinking and what they're feeling and encourage them through the pressures that they're dealing with. Because there's so many people that don't understand that there's no problem in life that's bigger than life. For were it bigger than life, it would not be in life. And there are so many young people today that are deciding this is too difficult, this is too hard. And so they take themselves out. Not just young people, older people. And we have to, we have to encourage and inspire and let them know that there's a greater than all that can solve every single thing that we're dealing with. And that is our Father. So I would pray that we as a community, as a family, will connect more with people and find a way of beginning to the various churches, really getting to know more about the people, the person, and the lives of the young people, and the older ones, and those that think their financial problems means the end of their life. Oh no, God is mighty. I know that because when I was little, I used to pray all the time that my mother would get a refrigerator and get a stove and we could get some more coal for the, to keep us warm and that my mother would hit the numbers. Oh yeah, come on, keeping it real. And that my mother would be queen for a day. But oh, God blessed her far more than that. He used my life, used me to bless her abundantly, far more than a queen for a day. And my family and my children, and their mothers and my family and just people that I have met. And Tamika and Rache and we could go on and on with just family, how God has used me. And I don't take the credit, I just say, God, you, to use me as a vehicle, I just thank you. And what more can I do to thank you every single day of this life of mine? I just wanted to share that with you all. Where's the harmonica? Thank you. 
Like it was yesterday awesome. um, we were all just blown away when when Stevie Wonder came to church and said you know he wanted to be there he's visiting our church and some of our musicians have played and 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 performed with him over the years but it was just such an honor to have him and that testimony and song I mean we were all just in amazement um, it was the one time in our church where you know I just let people take pictures and everything because it was it was appropriate in that moment but today we want to get into our message with you today and the title of today's <laughs> message is love in the time of coronavirus. Love in the time of coronavirus. And this is a little play on words. Some of you may remember there was a movie, it wasn't too big, but it was called Love in the Time of Cholera. And, and we are right in the middle of a pandemic and so much going on in our world. And we were just talking about how we could um, share some things that might help couples and help people, um, individuals as well during this difficult time, how to relate with one another and how to get along better. So, so imagine this, imagine being able to have healthy, life-giving conversations with your spouse, with your children and other people you care about. Imagine being able to understand why be people behave the way they do and imagine being able to change how others perceive you. So, so today, that, that's great. Today, we want to share a few tools from our personal marriage toolbox to help you communicate effectively with others. Whether married or single, 
Interpersonal relationships are built on the ability to understand, here it is, how others give and receive information. And this, this friends is not rocket science. However, it does require a lifetime commitment to the process. As a matter of fact, we've been working on this for almost 30 years now. And, and my goal is to one day get my doctorate in Madelineology. And I'm currently <laughs> studying to become a Kerwinologist so that I will know all things Kerwin. All right, no, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but the point is this. The point is, friends, we must commit to learning and speaking the other person's <clears throat> language. Not only that, the Word of God teaches us to value one another and to always strive to keep our motives pure and our relationships right. And while we're highlighting the marriage covenant today, we are confident that anyone can benefit from learning and using these principles. Wow, wow, that's good, that's good. And my mind is flood, being flooded right now with memories of our early years of marriage, those early years, and when we would often fail to listen and understand each other. And well, well let, me, let me take ownership, let's start doing this the right way. I wasn't very good at listening mainly because I was only interested back then in having Madeline hear me and receive the way I receive. And it didn't take long, friends, for me to realize that this style of communicating was not working. My Lord, I think we were both frustrated back then at times. Yeah, but thankfully we had a good support system and we were totally committed to not giving up. You see, we had decided before we got married that divorce was not an option. So we just kept praying and searching for solutions. My Lord, we read every marriage book we could get our hands on and we listened to every tape. Yeah, that's right. Cassette tapes back then that we could find. And we attended every marriage conference within reach. And the Lord has been very gracious to us because along the way we began to discover his desire and plans for our marriage. And this is the key. We continue to do the work. Come on, somebody say love in the time of coronavirus. Love, love in, in the, the time, time of, of coronavirus. coronavirus. So, so the first thing we want, I want to share with you, I'll begin. Um, if, if we're going to effectively communicate and love one another and walk together with our friendships and relationships, <laughs> the first thing we must do here it is number one, we must understand our uniqueness. We must understand our uniqueness. And when I talk about uniqueness, I'm specifically talking about the way that we are wired, the way that we're wired, the way that God created us. And it is unique. It's different from any other person. Um, even twins um, are not identical to to the thumbprint, to the to the to the DNA point of it. So so um, we have to understand our uniqueness and um, central to this is understanding that God is a God of amazing detail. Amen. He's a God of amazing detail. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Psalm 139, yeah, we're going to give you a few scriptures this this day as well. So we hope you have your Bibles with you. But in Psalm 139, one of my favorite passages, you hear me say that all the time. Um, verses 13 through 16. This is what the word says. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. You were there while I was being formed in utter seclusion. You saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. This is amazing and it reminds yeah. us that God created us in a special way, in a unique way, and, and no two individuals are, are completely alike. Amen. So this causes us to really have to work on our relationships with one another. So so while we are all designers, originals, we all come with similarities and differences. 
um, which can often be discovered by our personality types. And there's been some work done on this matter of personality types, how we're wired. And the key principle here is um, the key to effective communication is understanding. I said it earlier, how others give and receive information. Yes. This is crucial in marriage. It's, it's marriage communication 101 when it comes to marriage. But we've also found and in our church, it's also very helpful in helping family members, body members relate to one another understanding that we're unique and then doing, doing the, the, the following through to understand that we, um, the way we give and receive information. We, we have a personality test that we'd like to share with you. As a matter of fact, um, if you would text the word personality um, today, if you would text the word personality to the number that we always put on our screen, 626-602-1165, text personality to the number on your screen, we'll send you a copy of a simple test that will help you discover how you're wired. It's a personality test that we use in connection with scripture and all of the other ways we discover things about ourselves. But this is so vital to us doing the work that God has for us to do. Glory, amen. As a matter of fact, another scripture that I love and we share often in, in our times of counseling and in our, in our leadership of our church comes from Ephesians chapter two, verses, verse 10. In the Living Bible, this is what it says. Here it is. It says, it is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ, from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. I hope you caught that. Mm -hmm. God made us what we are. God made us who we are. That makes us unique. And when we accept friends and understand that God has made us what we are. When we understand our wiring, mm -hmm. we are then able to design healthy communication patterns with others. And then we're able to become more intentional when it comes to learning and speaking the other person's language. There's my Madelineology and her Kerwinology. <laughs> um, we, and we've been working on this for a long time. As a matter of fact, for example, you can probably tell even as I'm talking, I'm usually pretty loud and spontaneous. I'm a big picture, glass half full kind of guy. But my wife, on the other hand, you've heard her earlier. You'll hear her again. She's soft spoken <laughs> and she's thoughtful. She is details oriented and very perceptive. And when I want to communicate with her, I'm learning that I must consider my thoughts and words and then express them in a way that she can receive them. And I appreciate that so much. Amen. And that's 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 the key. Um, the first key we want to share with you in our marriage and in our relationships, we must understand our uniqueness. We must discover how we're wired and then we must make a commitment to learning how our spouses are wired. As a matter of fact, we already know how we are. You know, Pastor, I tell it like it is. I mean, we've got we already know how we are, but. In addition to that, we must do the work to understand how our mates are wired so that when we speak to them, when we communicate, we are speaking their language. Understand our uniqueness is number one. All right. Well, number two, we want to establish some marriage foundations. <clears throat> We're living in a time where the threat of coronavirus has caused us to shelter at home and to stay safe. That means we're not in our normal routines of work, school, practices, and meetings outside of the home. This disruption has caused a lot of stress. Domestic violence, suicide, depression, they're at an all time high. Mm, my Lord. So we need to set some priorities in our homes. We need to listen to one another more empathetically and give one another the benefit of the doubt. I'll be sharing these as marriage foundations, 
but some of these principles can be translated to your other relationships as well. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so number one, I want you to uphold the priority of your marriage. The marriage relationship is to have priority over all other relationships, including our parents. That's the message of Genesis chapter 2, 24, and I'm reading from the NASB. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother yes. and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Is your mate number one in your life? Or do you allow parents, friends, coworkers, or even your children to take the place intended for your spouse? You know, I'll never forget the day when you said publicly that I'm the woman you love more than your mother. Amen. Oh my goodness. He said it in a message in church and it was like the whole room just gasped. Like <gasps> the mothers were clutching their pearls and everybody was like, oh my goodness. I can't believe he said that. I think my mother fainted. <laughs> <laughs> but even I was like, oh, okay. You know, and it was just this public declaration that, you know, no, my spouse, my wife, she's priority in my life right now. Amen. And then we went on and we established that with our girls, that our relationship comes first. Yes. And um, I just remember just time sitting around the dinner table and talking about this and the importance of our marriage. And you would say something like, now, who comes first? And they would say, mommy comes first. And I would say, who comes first? Daddy comes first, and then us. And we were just setting that priority with them that, you know, we are one. Mom and dad are one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. Because, you know, children will try to come around well, they and will play, play one against the other. They but we were saying to them, we are one. Like a fiddle. <laughs> and then we had to establish that um, we needed to check with each other before making a commitment to someone else. So, you know, when I came arrived on the scene in Toledo, um, Pastor Kerwin had grown up there and he was the hometown boy. So he had many, many, many established relationships before I arrived. Mm -hmm. um, and then you had so many responsibilities in the church as a youth minister, the minister of music, associate pastor. Janitor. <laughs> yes, and you were just constantly being called <laughs> upon and all your boys, they just want to go out and play ball. And I just remember you just setting that pattern to say, let me check with Madeline, let me check with my wife before I, I make this commitment to you. And even one of your friends um, started to say that you were handpecked. He's like, oh, yes. you just handpecked. You just old hand, Madeline, you just done handpecked Kerwin. <laughs> We won't name him today, but <laughs> you know who you are. And we still <laughs> love you to this day. But we knew if we wanted our marriage to last, yes. we had to follow scripture and agree to uphold the yes. priority of our marriage over all other relationships. Yes, yes, amen. Next, I want you to uphold the permanence of your marriage. The word join in Genesis 2.24 means to glue together so that two become one. In other words, when you enter into marriage, your perspective should be this is a permanent relationship, long lasting. This means that you're committed for the long haul yes. until the moment death parts us. And Jesus himself said regarding this Old Testament teaching in Matthew 19, 6 in the CEV, then they are no longer two people, but one. And no one should separate a couple that God has joined together. Yes. So our declaration, divorce is not an option, that was us declaring that we are joining together 
and we've got to work through our conflicts. I got a funny, another funny story that when um, <clears throat> we, in our early years of marriage, I don't know what we were arguing about. <laughs> I can't remember to this day, but for some reason, I got the idea in my head that you know, I'm just so mad that I'm going to go sleep on the couch. No, no, you told me. <laughs> I did? <laughs> you told me to go sleep on the couch first, and I said, I'm not sleeping on the couch. Oh, This is okay. my bed, too. <laughs> then you said. <laughs> okay, then I said, since you weren't going to go sleep on the couch, right. I was going to go sleep on the couch. So I got my pillow, and I got a blanket or something, and I went and I just got myself comfortable on the couch few minutes later, here you come, and you're trying to get on the couch with me. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep on the couch. I don't want to be next to you right now. So then I got the stuff, my pillow and blanket, and I went into this other little room that we had, kind of like a TV small room. And I'm trying to just, you know, get myself comfortable there. Here you come coming in there with me and I'm like oh no 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 she was mad <laughs> y'all was so she mad. was mad at I me. was just stopping and everything so you won't believe this but I went into the bathroom into the tub <laughs> and I got in the tub <laughs> with my pillow and blanket <laughs> and here you go getting in the top with me but that was like that was it that was when I just broke down and started laughing and he was like look if we're gonna be in this we gotta talk it out we can't go to bed angry yeah and we laughed and we talked it out and um needless to say We've never, neither one of us have tried to sleep on the couch. Never again. Again, that was like setting the foundation, I guess, the standard that we would just talk it out, you know? Mm -hmm. So our joint declaration that divorce is not an option meant that we were upholding the permanence of our marriage so that we committed to joining together as one to work out our conflicts. Now, anyone who's been married for any length of time knows that one of the most vital parts of communication is the art of listening. We haven't mastered it yet, but we're a lot better than we used to be. Amen. You see, in our first years of marriage, I think we did a lot of selective listening. <laughs> That's when you listen to your spouse through your own bias, not being open-minded or trying to see things from their point of view. Selective listening is listening to criticize, listening for something specific and nothing else. Hmm. It's also listening during the beginning of the conversation, only to wait for your opportunity to interrupt them and make your point. Guilty. Have you ever caught yourself trying to think of your reply while selective listening to your spouse? I know I have. Yes. Stephen R. Covey sums this up in this quote. The biggest problem in communication is we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. Hmm. Here's how you know when you're selectively listening to your spouse. Are you more concerned about your spouse understanding you or, or you making your point rather than understanding your spouse? Hey, I've been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt many, many times. I'm learning that when I just stop trying to make my point and just focus on actively listening to you, our communication has been more healthy and effective. Now, active listening is focused on, and uh, is focused, and it's physically obvious in how you demonstrate your interest in what your spouse is saying. It's using eye contact, head nods, verbal acknowledgments, and body language. This also includes learning through listening. 
asking questions and eliminating possible misunderstandings through reiteration of what they said. It means so much to me when Kerwin gives me his undivided attention by putting his phone away and just making eye contact with me, <clears throat> listening solely to understand and receive the message I'm trying to send. Now, our goal is consistently practicing empathetic listening with one another. Mm. This means that we're trying to understand and see where each other is coming from, where we are and why we feel the way we do. In other words, we're trying to see things through the other's eyes or point of view. This doesn't mean that we're gonna automatically agree, but it does mean putting yourself in the other person's shoes, and it's listening with concern for the well-being of your spouse. Like I said, we haven't mastered the art of listening yet, but in our almost 30 almost years of there. marriage, we've come too far to turn back now. My Lord, amen. And practice makes permanence. Try listening more empathetically to your spouse and uphold the permanence of your marriage. I'm gonna let you go on now, honey. I, like, I, I was enjoying that, I was enjoying it. <laughs> Um, to the fullest, upholding the permanence and the priority of your marriage. And, and that's something we've been working on for a while now. And, and we continue to do the work to make that your priority, marriage, family. And if you're not married, relationships, friendships, all of these are so important to us being healthy um, and thriving in every mm -hmm. way. And I guess the third point um, we'd like to share, maybe if, if you enjoy this, maybe we'll come back and share some more at another time together and tag team like we're doing today. But number mm -hmm. three, the third point we want you to do is this, um, as we consider love in the time of coronavirus, how we get along and communicate during this crazy time. Number three is remember that this is team us. Yes. We say team Manning. Manning. That, that, you know, all of the things we can think of, teamwork makes the dream work. Whatever, whatever helps you to get there, understanding that, that this, this is a relationship and a bond where we are on the same side. Yes. We shared risks, shared rewards. We're in this, th this is it, we're in this together. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this with your spouse or, or your fiance, um, look at them and just say, we're in this together. We're, we're in this together. together. So then any problem, anything that, that you're facing, um, th you, you know, it's, it's, it's the two of us against that problem, whatever it is, in prayer, in, in the way that we relate and deal with whatever it is in front of us, we are team us. Yes. And friends, it's so easy right now to get frustrated and upset. Um, it, it's easy during this time of quarantine and isolation um, that, that these frustrations and being upset with each other, all, you know, these things are, are on fire in our lives and in our homes. But we must remember this, that the place of agreement is the place of power. Amen. Remembering that we're on the same team is just walking in agreement with one another having an understanding with each other so that when we choose to go in a direction, we're going in the same direction. As a matter of fact, the scripture teaches us that there is no forward progress unless there is agreement. There's a couple of scriptures I just want to show you that I use this in, in our marriage counseling and even in our marriage um, when I'm performing marriages. I read these two scriptures. The first one is Amos chapter three, verse three. Amos chapter three, Verse three, hope you're writing it down or you can turn to it real quick, but this is what it says. It says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? We know the answer, absolutely not. We say, let's go for a walk and I, <laughs> I start to go north and you start to go south. We will be separated real soon. Yes. So we must agree. And then there's another one in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine through 12, that's powerful as well. And I chose this, I chose this translation in the CEV in particular, because it's not talking about um, a marriage in, per se, but it's talking about two people and even, even in our friendships. Listen to what it says. It says, you are better off to have a friend than to be all alone, because then you will get more enjoyment out of what you earn. 
If you fall, your friend can help you up. But if you fall without having a friend nearby, you're really in trouble, the Bible says. If you sleep alone, you won't have anyone to keep you warm on a cold night. Someone might be able to beat, beat up one of you, but not both of you. As the saying goes, a rope made from these three strands of cords is hard to break. And I can see some of y'all reading that and say, well, you know, sleeping with friends. I know I'm not talking about, <laughs> I'm not talking about, uh, what do they call it? Friends with benefits. No, we're not talking about friends with benefits. But we're talking about this principle of, of, of friendship, companionship, and, and that strongest bond is marriage. And if you heard that last little part of it, the three strand cord, that is the Lord himself as the DNA of your marriage. It, 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 it's hard to defeat. It can be broken. Oh, man. Someone once said, um, as we as we wrap this up, someone once said, be careful what you ask for. You know, you've heard mm -hmm. people saying that. I know I've said it. Um, and, and before coronavirus, you know, some of us were longing for extended times with our spouse and with our children. Oh, we wish we had more time with our husband, our wives and our kids. And now, Lord, have mercy. Almost a year later, some of those same people <laughs> are praying, Lord, Jesus, please allow them to go away to work and, and, and God please God open up the schools so that they can go to school and, and you know as, as, as my wife said it so, so perfectly things can become very intense and strained if we don't understand that we're on the same team Amen. our goal is to win together Yes. And this is no laughing matter, as she, she mentioned, when we consider during this time of coronavirus um, that domestic violence is at an all time high. People are at each other at each other's throats, literally. Mm -hmm. But this cannot happen. It cannot exist on our watch. We've got to walk together and walking together becomes vital and necessary, not only for our spiritual, mental, physical health, um, but for us pleasing the Lord in all that we do. And we know, we know, you already know that love um, ties all of this together. As a matter of fact, I believe that love is the most powerful force in the universe. And, you know, I, we could share other scriptures with you that, that lets us know in 1 Corinthians, love never, never fails. Um, and it also, we're also reminded in the scripture that God is love in 1 John 4, 8. And, and this is it. God's plan is that we walk together to experience the fullness of his love. Yes. His unity and the exponential power that comes with our agreement, with remembering that we're on the same team. The last scripture I want to share with you, then we're done, comes from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 30 and 31. Deuteronomy 32, verses 30 through 31 in the NLT. This is what it says. How could one person chase a thousand of them and two people put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? But the rock of our enemies is not like our rock, capital R, as even they recognize. What is this? What is this saying? It's saying that together we are more powerful with the Lord on yes. our side. And as we walk in agreement, we have exponential power. And, and this 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 principle and this powerful union um, is what we fight with and how we win. This calls us to know who our enemy is and then choose to be united as one on the same team yes. so that we can good. overcome evil with good. Amen. I pray that this has helped you in some way. We, we're going to pause here. We're out of time for today, but we'd like to pray with you before we go and, and hope, you, hope that you will do the work, especially to our couples who are listening today and, and, and all of our friends. Do the work to grow in your relationship where you understand your uniqueness. I need to find out about myself and about my mate. Where you establish marriage foundations priorities and, 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 and such. And then when you remember that this is team us, we're team Manning. We are whatever team you are. Come on, just say it right down on three. One, two, three. Team, team Manning. Manning. All right. I hope you didn't say Manning. I hope you <laughs> said Smith or, or Lee or, or, you know, Peters or, 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 or Ellis's or whatever you may have said, but, but you're a team. 
So let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share with our family and friends today. We thank you for your word that illuminates our lives. We thank you, God, for this teaching that helps us to understand, even as we've shared today, Madeline and I, my darling wife, that we've laughed together and, and we've enjoyed each other's company even around the word of God, you're not far away from us, but you're right in the middle of our marriage. And we ask you, we invite you, Lord Jesus, to be at the center of our lives. Come on, if that's something you need to do with your spouse and in your relationships, Lord, I invite you, we invite you to be at the center of all that we do and all that we are. We ask your blessing upon every couple that's watching, every husband, every wife, and we release a blessing over, over the marriages that are represented here today. And we pray that you would strengthen them. We take authority against the enemy's tactics to divide and to separate and to keep us um, apart and to, and to keep us angry um, and disappointed with one another. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak that there would be an atmosphere of love and respect mm -hmm. in every home. And finally, we pray for our single brothers and sisters as well. We pray that, that, that they haven't tuned out today because this is relationship 101 as well. And we believe, God, um, that you have greater things in store for them as well. And it's not always just marriage, but Lord, just healthy lives, health, healthy relationships, healthy communication, and, and, and then the opportunity to be all that you've created them to be and to do all you've called them to do. We thank you for our family. Yes. and what you're doing with us and in us. And we ask your blessings, God, over this time and over this day and over everyone watching today. We thank you. We thank you. If anyone's watching and they don't know you as their Lord and Savior, that's the first step to make Jesus king. As a matter of fact, if that's you, just pray these words. Say, Jesus, Jesus I, ask I ask you to be the king of my life. Of my life. I, give you I give you all that I am. And I, accept and I accept this wonderful gift, this wonderful gift of, salvation of salvation that you're giving me today. That you're giving me today. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. Thank you all so much. And thank you, sweetheart, for spending this time with us and with me today and sharing this message. This is fun. This was fun. We should do it next week. I don't know about that. <laughs> I knew she would say that. Hallelujah. Well, if you <laughs> prayed that prayer with us, the first thing we want you to do, um, that prayer to ask Jesus into your heart, text the words, I believe. Text the words, I believe, to the number on your screen, 626-602-1165. And if you don't have your phone, you can't do that, go to, your, go to our website, www.pasadenachurch.com. And there's a page on there that says Decision Card. If you click that link, you can also let us know that you've made a decision to follow Christ or you're renewing your relationship with the Lord or you even have a prayer request. We'd encourage you this week to go to that site and and share a prayer request that you may have for your marriage so that we can be praying for you this week. We will commit to all of the requests that come in for prayer for your marriages and whatever information you feel comfortable sharing, we will keep that confidential, but we will commit to praying for you and your marriages this week. If you are a first time guest, you can text hello to that same number so that we can send you a response and let you know what's happening here at Pasadena Church and how you can stay connected. If you are a member of Pasadena Church, let us know that too. text member and we'll send you a reply so that we can keep up with you and make sure that all of our members are in the loop to that same number 626-602-1165. We also invite you to join us for prayer every Monday through Friday for our United Prayer at 6 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and the number 609-663-5949. As you call that number, you'll hear the intercessors praying, and you'll also have an opportunity to, to speak and to share a prayer request if you have one, and we'll pray for you on that line every morning, Monday through Fridays. And then finally, we're so thankful for every gift. Um, Pastor Madeline also serves as our administrator. and We're planning an all church meeting coming up at the end of this month where we'll share um, how our giving has been reflected in all that we've been able to accomplish as a church and where your gifts have gone um, and, and how it's blessed the body of Christ and the world that we live in. We want to be very accountable in that. We'll be telling you more about that later. But if you'd like to give the, the information on your screen through our website, through our mobile app, 
through the, the, the various giving apps. The one that we prefer is the Zelle app because with Zelle, there are no fees that we have, to, we have to incur. So if you can use Zelle, that's the best way to do it because there's no fees attached. So we would love for you to give through Zelle, but we also love for you, you can just put it in the mail and mail it to Pasadena Church, 404 East Washington Boulevard, Pasadena, California, 91104. It's all good. We're just so thankful. Thank um, you. If you're able to, we, we just receive that with gratitude and we promise you, you that we will do with those gifts and that giving um, what's honorable to the Lord um, and to his kingdom. Finally, please continue to follow us on Facebook under Pasadena Church. And you can also follow us on YouTube under Pasadena Church Online. But more than anything, know that we love you. We believe in you and you, you matter, matter to God. God.